Lord, we've preached all the tough stuff of temptation, and we have preached all the tough stuff of anxiety. And this morning, I've got a sermon that's a little bit different. I want to preach this third sermon, which might be the last sermon uh, on this in this series, on the tough stuff of three things that you might not think are tough, but they're actually very tough. Wow. Dedication, discipline, and diligence. Wow. Dedication, discipline, and diligence. And this is where I know the Lord wants us to go this morning. 2 Timothy chapter 2, will you bow your heads with me in prayer? Father, we praise you, and we love you, and we glorify your name. God, we lift you up, and we acknowledge you as the Lord and the Savior of our life, Lord. You promised in your word that as we preach today, this word will not return void, Father, but it will go into hearts and minds that are good ground today, to ears that are listening to what thus saith the Lord, to what the Spirit has to say to us today, Father. Gather us around your word, Father, and enlighten us. Let it be a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path, God. Use me this day, I pray, as just a vessel, Father. And Father, we ask all this in the name of Jesus Christ, your Son, and everybody said, Amen. Amen. 2 Timothy chapter 2, verses 3-7. to 7. Thou therefore endure hardness as a good soldier of Jesus Christ. No man that warreth, in other words a soldier, entangleth himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who hath chosen him to be a soldier. And if a man also strives for masteries, that's an athlete, yet he is not crowned except he strive lawfully. The husband then, that's a farmer, that laboreth must be first partaker of the fruits. Consider what I say, and the Lord give thee understanding in all things. I want to start at the back of that and go forward. The last thing that he says in that particular passage is, consider these things that I am saying to you. I'm going to give it to you the way that he gave it to me yesterday evening. Pretty fast and furious, actually. Pretty hot off the wire, so to speak. And the first thing that he said to me was, Tell them to consider these things. I'm not reading these verses as an accident or coincidence. I'm reading these because Jesus, of all the verses in the Bible and things that he gives his disciples, these are words coming out of Paul to Timothy. And Paul is saying, the Lord has said to you, take note of these three things. Take note of, of this soldier and this athlete and this farmer that I'm giving you these illustrations about. And really what he's saying is take note to be dedicated and disciplined and diligent in your walk. So let me, let me break it down for you because Paul is really seeking to encourage Timothy in his work. And, and I've come today to encourage you. The last few sermons have all been about encouraging you. It's been about tough stuff. But how many know that if God be for us, who can be against us? Amen? How many people know that greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world? Amen? And that means that we have a constant source of hope and help that the world does not have. We have someone to turn to when we're sick in the midnight hour. We have a source of knowledge and a source of wisdom that goes beyond the greatest PhD that Harvard has ever produced. Amen? Amen. The intellectuals at Yale cannot decipher the mind of God the way that his own people can. Amen? There is something about having the presence of God and knowing God intimately in your life that will completely change your life for the better. Amen? Amen? And you don't have to believe me. All you've got to do is come to the altar of repentance, confess your sins, become a Christian today, and then get your own experience with the Savior. Oh, yeah. Amen? Yeah. I, could, I could stand here and preach you a million sermons, and you don't have to believe a word I said. I don't like 
religion. I like relationship. Amen. Jesus came preaching that we need to have a relationship with himself and with the Holy Spirit and with the Father. Amen. He did not preach religion. If anything, the religious hierarchy of the day aggravated the heart and mind of Jesus. We like to say in the little Sunday school classrooms, the Pharisees are not fair, you see. And the Sadducees were pretty sad, you see. Amen. They did not do the law nor keep the law. And he said, if you're going to do what? In 3rd Zechariah, walk in my ways. You're going to have to keep my commandments. Then I will let you govern in my house. Amen. What I've come to tell you today is we've got to pull off the filth of the world and start being more dedicated and more disciplined and more diligent in our walk with God than we have ever been before. Somebody say amen. amen. I didn't come to hoop and a holler today. I came to tell you what thus saith the word of the Lord, that it might go into your heart and mind and change you and your life today. Somebody say amen. amen. Paul is seeking to encourage Timothy because he is an evangelist. He is one that goes out and shares the word of God. In 2024 we cannot just be saved to sit anymore. We have got to be saved to serve. Amen. We have got to be, got to be the generation that gets out there and ministers to a lost and dying world. You say, what's so lost and dying about it? Woke culture is what's so lost and dying about it. The confusion that it has caused in our culture. Amen. Uh, the LGTB community has, has caused confusion in our culture in a way like never before. I am telling you, God will not be mocked. He said if my people that are called by my name would humble themselves and seek my face and turn from their wicked ways, I would again hear from the heaven and I would do what? I would heal their land. Amen. God is looking for his people to be all their knees. Put your placards down and quit protesting in the streets of our cities and get on your knees again before Almighty God and get your own heart and your own house cleaned out so we can get the nation of America cleaned out again. Somebody say amen. amen. My God. Hallelujah. In making this encouragement to Brother Timothy, Paul alludes to three professions. And that is of a soldier and an athlete and a farmer. And here's what he says. The first thing I want to talk about is dedication. And he alludes to that dedication that a soldier has when he is sent into warfare. And, and, and dedication requires a word that we don't talk about very much. It's that word long-suffering. Amen. If you are a soldier and you are sent overseas to fight, you might as well be a good soldier that can endure some hardships and just know up front that if you're in the military now in America, you're going to have to do some long-suffering. You know why? Because soldiers have to to endure difficult battle conditions in climates that they're not used to, in geographies that they are not used to, living in customs and ways with languages that they are unaccustomed to. They see suffering and death all around them constantly, but still they must press on to win because they must have in the back of their mind that there is a greater calling and a higher prize than what they can see. Amen. What is invisible is what is important in the kingdom of God. It's not what you can touch. It's what you can't touch. It's not what you can see. It's what you cannot see that's going to make the difference for you when you breathe your last breath. The Bible says to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord Jesus Christ. Either when I go in the grave, I'm going to meet him at the pearly gates, or I'm going in the rapture. We'll split the eastern skies and meet him in the clouds. Somebody say amen. Hallelujah. But you're not going to endure unless you have dedication. Somebody shout dedication. dedication. Hallelujah. A soldier that sees suffering and death all around them has the option that once in a while to just throw up their hands and quit and give in and say, shoot me next. I don't see a reason to live anymore. All my buddies are gone. All my friends are gone. Maybe you've come to a point where your family's all gone. It'd be real easy to say, Lord, just take me. But I've got good news for you. There's still work and a righteous duty to perform upon the face of the earth. And God is not done with us yet, ladies and gentlemen. I'll tell you what he's done with you. When you're raptured to meet him in the air, that's what he's done with you. When you take your last breath, 
That's when he's done with you. You say, I don't believe it. You don't have to believe it. The Bible says it is appointed a time for a man to die. And after that, the judgment. It's appointed a time. Hallelujah. There'll be a time when he ain't done with you. And if you throw up your hands now and quit, you might be throwing up your hands for your entire family. Because if you go down, you might take the entire family down with you. We need strong mothers. We need strong fathers in the church who can parent their children. You know, the Bible promises that if you bring them up in the ways of the Lord when they're old, they will not depart from that. Amen. Amen. You say, my son or daughter is out in the world right now and they're living in sin. That's fine. Pray them back in. Amen. Turn and request every chance you get for them. Get on your knees and say, God, your word says. And quote the word of God to the word. Amen. And his promises are true. He is from everlasting to everlasting. He will make good on his promises. What's the Bible say? He's not a man that he should lie. He will make good on everything he's ever promised you. We as the body of Christ, we should be able to endure in our spiritual walk. We don't have to tough it up a little bit, ladies and gentlemen. Come on. Come on. Quit acting like when it rains, we can't come to church. Amen. Amen. Quit acting like when we got a headache, we can't come to church. Amen. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. Quit acting like we got to keep that $5 in our pocket to get us a hamburger and put it in the offering once in a while. Amen. Till your Starbucks have it. Come on, somebody say amen. Yeah. amen. Make some good, positive movements to maturity in the faith and encourage yourself in the Lord. Yeah. Amen. 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 Stop just claiming Christianity and live like a Christian. Yeah. Amen. My God, people giving him lip service but their hearts are fall from them. Their hearts are not anywhere near God. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. You know how I know I know that? Because I see church after church. I watch church after church on YouTube some days. In fact, I just I watch them so much, Tammy, they've gotten to my algorithm and they just come up when I turn on YouTube. And you know what? I've stopped watching it. Because it's depressing, Brother John, to see these churches our size. And the people come in and they sit there for an hour and a half. And they're just sitting on the premises instead of standing on the promises. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. They barely throw up a hand to worship if they're lucky. Amen. Oh, Nobody stands up and claps their hands. Nobody sings the songs of Zion. Come on. These are not yeah. uh, suggestions in the kingdom. These are commands in the book of Psalms. Yeah. He tells us to lift up our two holy hands. Amen. Yeah. He says to sing the songs of Zion. He says to clap our hands. He says to play on the instruments. Yeah. To encourage one another with spiritual songs. He tells us to do these things. They're not suggestions. They're commands of Almighty God. How is it that the leadership of churches can get away with allowing people not to do these things? We don't, we don't, our job is not to force you, but our job sure is to encourage you to do those things. Our worship leaders need to be saying, everybody stand up and lift your hands and praise the Lord. Come on. Let's get in the presence of God. Let's worship Him. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so. Rejoice and again I say rejoice. Bless the Lord with me and together, together, somebody say together. Let your neighbor and say together. It's time the church of God gets together and together let us extol His name. Together. Not me by myself while you sit there and look at me. Together let us extol His name. Come on, there's nights when you don't feel like it, but you're going to have to come in and worship. Amen. Sunday mornings when you don't feel like it, but you're going to have to drag yourself up and come in and worship. Yeah. Yeah. Amen. There's a blessing far greater than you can even understand when you worship the Lord. Everything is on the other side of your praise. Yeah. You want healing in your body? Praise Him. Yeah. You know what God said to me not long ago, Pastor John? He said, I can't bless my people the way I want to because they won't praise me the way they need to. Come on. God has a greater blessing for you. You don't have to be sick in your body. You can be healed, but you got to praise the Lord. Amen. Without, like, because you got the sniffles, you can't raise your hand and give him glory. Come on. <laughs> Second Timothy 1 and 8 says, Be therefore, uh, be not therefore, excuse me, ashamed of the testimony of our Lord, 
nor of me his prisoner, but be thou partaker of the afflictions of the gospel according to the power of God. Come on. What does that mean? You're going to have to endure some stuff, but you're going to be able to endure some stuff. Yeah. But you're going to have to have the Holy Ghost and power living on the inside of you. Yeah. You need the Spirit of God in residence in your body to be able to endure what is coming in 2024. Come on, Somebody say, you're talking about the election? I'm not even sure there's going to be an election. Right. Come on, true, man. True. Not what God's saying to me in my prayer time. I don't know what he's saying to you, but he's saying to me this whole nation's about to change, and it's all going down within about a year and a half time. Yes. Amen. That's what he's saying to me. Over and over again, I'm hearing that in my spirit. I ain't listening to these crazy people on YouTube. No. I ain't listening to these prophetic people. Half of them ain't got a clue what they're talking about. They're rambling a bunch of nonsense. Be careful what you believe. If you don't agree with the witness of your spirit, turn it off. Don't just take every word that somebody gives to you, whether it's in person or it's over social media, and believe it to be true. It better agree and bear witness with your yeah. spirit. Oh, if it doesn't and it doesn't line up with the word of God, it is false. Let it go. Yeah. Let, it go. Let it go. Amen? Yeah. The second thing that requires a soldier to be is focus. Somebody say focus. Oh, yeah. Nobody can afford to think about anything else but the battle when they are in warfare. To survive, you've got to concentrate and pay attention to what's going on around you. Come on, somebody say amen. Amen. <laughs> we cannot be distracted by the world or else we will bear no fruit unto maturity. Amen. Because the world will cause you to lay down and give up every time. They will distract you every time. They will say there's no reason for you to suffer. You need to just, oh, oh, you're a Christian and you're suffering? I don't understand. Well, the Bible tells us we're going to suffer. Yes. Jesus said, take up your cross and follow me. Yes. Amen. <laughs> let, let me move on. The second thing here is that we got to be devoted. That's the last thing a soldier has to be. He has to be devoted. A good soldier desires to please their commanding officer at all times. Yes. So the next time you see any person in a military uniform, you ask yourself, am I as devoted to the work of the cross as they are to the work of the country? Come on, yes, yes. Come on somebody say amen. Amen? amen. 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 As, am I as devoted to Jesus Christ as they are to the United States of America military? Come on. Do I have a mission? Do I know my mission? And do I am I withholding my mission? Amen? Come on. Let's move on. The next thing he says after the dedication of a soldier is he says you need the discipline of an athlete. The discipline of an athlete. Somebody who strives for, for mastery is the way he poses it. Let me tell you what an athlete is. Two things. They are obedient and they are self-controlled. You say, how is an obedient an athlete obedient? Because the athlete must always compete according to the rules of the game. Amen. You cannot get out on the field and create your own rules and expect the referee not to call you and throw you out of the game or at least give you a penalty. Amen? Amen. you got to play according to there are spiritual laws and spiritual rules. you got to play this game we call life according to. So, so, so what are the rules? Follow the commands of God. Be not just hearers of the word, but doers of the word. You know, you're, you're, you're a baseball player. You just can't sit back there uh, in the locker room and hear your coach tell you what plays you're going to do and, and read the playbook. you got to get out there and follow the rules. Not just be a hero, but be a doer. Because if you are not, not only will you not be successful, but you'll uh, confuse everybody else on the field also. Yeah. They're depending on you to follow the rules. This church is only as strong as its weakest Christian. Because I am depending on everybody in celebration to follow the rules. You say, what are the rules? They're right here in the rule book. Now, you say, well, that's awful legalistic of you. I'm not talking in legalism. God said, if you love me, you can keep my commandments. And then he said that all the rules, known as the law, hang on that. All the words the prophets have ever given us, whether in scripture or face to face, hangs on the fact that you love him. Amen. That's what keeps you obedient to the rules, the love that you have for Jesus Christ. Amen. In the day and the age that we're living in church, we cannot afford to be an athlete or a Christian that just throws up our hands and gets mad because something happens and stomps off the field. Yeah. 
We can't afford to get out of the game. We need to be right in the middle of the game. Yes. <laughs> An athlete has to be self-controlled to be disciplined. Come on. Self-controlled. We have to be able to look at sin in the face and say, I don't want any part of that mess. Amen. I don't want any part of that going on. 1 Corinthians chapter 9, verses 24 to 27 says this. Know ye not they that which run a race. Let me say it again. Know ye not that they which run in a race, all but one receives the prize. So run that you can obtain it. And every man that strives for mastery is temperate, which means self-controlled, in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we do it to obtain an incorruptible crown. Amen? Amen? And then he says, I therefore so run, means I follow these orders, yeah. not as uncertainly, so fight I, not as one that beats against the air. Yeah. In other words, I have a purpose, I'm not just wasting time full of a hot air, using a lot of words and, 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 and throwing everybody off course. I have a clear course. I know where I'm going. I've got my head in the game, and I'm ready to run this race. Yeah. I've got my eyes on the prize, and I'm headed for that. Yeah. It's the mark of a higher calling in Christ Jesus our Lord. Yeah. He says, I keep my body under subjection. So that even after I preach to you, I don't come up absent. Amen. Amen. Even after I've taught you, I want to go to heaven. Yes. I want to make it would be awful to gain the whole world and lose your soul. Right. Yes. Right. Come on, somebody say amen. amen. Somebody say amen. It's okay. Amen. I spilled my water. It's okay. <laughs> Satan's trying to mess with me because I'm preaching on being focused. So he's trying to get me unfocused. Oh. That's up, ladies and gentlemen. The last thing is diligence. And I'm going to be done. Diligence of a farmer. A farmer has to be hardworking. Farming is not an easy task. It requires you work every day of the week. You don't get public holidays off. <laughs> you don't get much pay. And you don't get any pat on the back. Even though farmers are the backbone of our country. You know anything about history, the first thing you'll study when you study every ancient civilization are farmers. Because they began every single ancient civilization. Egypt began with farmers. Mesopotamia began with farmers. Ancient China began with farmers. Russia began with farmers. Every civilization began with farmers. Somebody put in a, you know why it began with farmers? Because there's only two kinds of things you can be in the world. A farmer or a hunter-gatherer. Yep. A hunter-gatherer means you're going to go shoot for meat and gather things like nuts and berries. But pretty soon, if you want to stay in the same place, you're going to have to learn how to farm. Because you're going to have to shot every animal in that area. And you're going to have gathered all the food in that area. And you're going to have to learn to put a seed in the ground if you want to stay there. And let the ground provide some, some substance that you can do every single season and year. Amen? Amen. And so farmers are really, we need to give the American farmer a pat on the back. Somebody say amen. Yeah. It's the American farmer that's keeping us going today. Yeah. Farming is not easy. It requires knowledge of the seasons for planting and harvesting. Christians must be able to know spiritual seasons. We must be able to observe these seasons with the same clarity that a farmer has. Amen. Yes. Matthew 9, 37 and 38 says this. Then saith he unto his disciples, The harvest truly is plentiful, but the laborers are few. Amen. Pray ye therefore the Lord of the harvest that he will send laborers into the harvest. You know what? I doubt that many of us ever do that. I doubt we ever do that. You say, what's that look like in reality? I can I, I help you what that looks like in reality. We need to start praying for all the pastors in Dayton, Ohio. Amen. Amen. We need to start praying for all the worship leaders in Dayton, Ohio. Yeah. We do a lot of this. Oh, God, anoint me so I can preach. Me. Anoint me so I can sing. Yeah. Anoint me. Fill up my church. Yeah. Well, I got the best band. Well, I got... No one cares. Come on. Yeah. That's not what it's about. Yeah. If you think that's what it's about, well, my church shouts every service. No one cares. Amen. 
That's not what it's about. It's amazing to me that we have come to a place in our country where the Christians, don't even adult Christians, a lot of them don't know the Bible stories, the simple Sunday school Bible stories. Yeah. Come on. Yeah. Forget about forget about meat of the word. That's the milk. Yeah. That's the milk of the word. Amen. But we've got adults who don't know simple Sunday school Bible stories anymore. Right. Amen. I'm trying to figure out what to preach for vacation Bible school. And I'm like, well, I like to preach on this and this and this and the interest in, you know all these all these heavy topics and the lord said no i'm going to give you some sunday school bible stories to preach on this year vacation bible school for the adults and i went okay he's like they don't know them as well as they think they know them they've never dug into them they think they got them they ain't got them yet they need to dig into them there's stuff in there that's important they've hit the surface of them they've only got the milk of them they've not fed on the meat of those words yet do you know that you can preach every text, every single text, Pastor John, we can preach milk or we can preach meat out of it. Yeah. Every single word in the, in the word of God. Yeah. It just depends on who's in the congregation, how we can preach it. Right. And you know what? And I'm sure every minister in the house can attest to this. When we get up to preach and we begin to deliver the word of God, you can instantly tell where the people are spiritually. Yeah. Because you know if you're preaching milk yeah. or meat that day. Come on. Amen. Amen? Amen. You can even tell where they are, and not only in their walk, but where they, what kind of day they've had, Sister Ann. Because if I have to get up and all I can preach is milk, I know everybody in the house had a rough day. Amen? It's all they can every day. But when I get up, and the Spirit of the Lord hits me, and I begin to preach the meat of the Word, I can tell people have been in prayer with God that day. Amen? They've been talking to God. They've been saying, God, I'm hungry and thirsty for righteousness. Feed me by your Word today. That pastor put some food on the table. I gotta have something to chew on today, amen. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. A farmer has no one to motivate him. He's gotta stay motivated to be diligent. No one stands over the farmer and makes them do their work. No one wakes them up at five o'clock in the morning and says, get out of the field and start working. They do it to feed their families. Yeah. They do it to provide for one another one another. And they realize that their labor is not in vain. First Corinthians 15, 58 says, Therefore, my beloved, be steadfast, unmovable, always abounding in the work of the Lord, for as much as you know that your labor is not in vain in the Lord. Yes. Amen? Amen. <laughs> your work. What is your work? I'm almost done. Much of our work has to do with our conversation. It has to do with how we're, we're using our language to bring people to God. Yeah. Now I'm going to say this. And I want everybody to look at me for just a second. If you would. I know y'all taking notes and being diligent. <laughs> about taking notes. But I want to say this. Are you sharing Jesus? Yeah. Are you sharing Jesus? If you are. Thank you. Thank you. If you are not sharing Jesus. You need to be. Amen. It's just that simple. I mean, we can all shout and jump up and down in here. But if we want our churches in America to fill up again, we're going to have to start sharing Jesus. Amen. Because just sitting here and pretending that the, that the Lord is magically going to bring these people in and fill these pews, that's not the way it works. He said the sheep beget the sheep. Yeah. That means you're going to have to go out to the highways and the byways and compel them to come in. You're going to have to go out there and you're going to have to not be afraid and let the, let the Lord use you. And I know we go out there and we're like, oh, well, I'm, I'm not ashamed of the gospel, but I just don't even know where to start. You don't need to know where to start. Open your mouth and let the Lord fill it. Yeah. Open your mouth and have a conversation with somebody and God will fill your mouth. Amen. 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 He is about trying to grow his own kingdom. Amen. All he needs is you and I to be about the same thing. Let me ask you a question, something to call your heart. How many people do you pass a day? I mean, do you just walk past, Brother Rusty? How many people do we walk past that we never say anything to them about Jesus? I bet we've all got friends, close acquaintances that we have never mentioned Jesus to. I mean, we might they might know we go to church, but that's not doing anything. They might not even know. Have you even shared why you go to church? What's it do for you? It's highly unlikely in the world we live in they're going to ask you why you go to church because they don't care. 
<laughs> the world doesn't care why we are Christians. In fact, the world considers us to be bigots. They consider us to be prejudiced in a lot of ways. Because we don't uphold their beliefs. And we won't give in to their beliefs. And they have a perceived idea of what we're all like. They think we all hate them. They think we all hate the LGTB community. They think we all hate... Come on, anything that's wrong, they think we hate... I don't hate anybody. I don't agree with everybody's lifestyle. But I'm not going to throw that in your face. Come on. I'm not going to not talk to you. I'm not going to not treat you with respect. And please don't look at the few Christians out there that are acting that way and think that that's all of us. Because I'm sick of that too. Amen. I'm sick of this preconceived notion that we're all a certain way. You would never, the world would never want us to think that they were all a certain way or judge them. We need to do the same thing. Amen. We need to show them love. We need to show them kindness and courtesy. You don't have to agree with them, but you need to at least show them love. Amen. If they ask you, do you agree? You don't have to lie to them. Come on. You tell them the truth. No, I don't agree with that. And here's why I don't agree with it. Because I'm a Christian and I read my Bible and this is what the Bible says. This is what I live by. And we might have to agree to disagree on some things, but I can still be your friend. Amen. I can still be your friend. Amen. Let me tell you something. If somebody doesn't befriend some prostitutes, they'll always be prostitutes. Amen. If somebody doesn't befriend some of the drug addicts we got going on in Dayton, they'll always be drug addicts. Because it's time we get out of these four walls. I love you all, and I love this place that God has given us, and I appreciate this beautiful church that God has given us to worship in, but it's time to get out of here. Something in my spirit is like, time's winding up, Jeremy. Yes. You ain't got much time. Get out. Right. Get out of the four walls. Yeah. Get out of the ministry. He has said to me, have church in the parking lot once in a while. It's coming, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Parking lot church is coming. Yeah. Hang on. Get your fans out, honey. Get your, get your funeral home fans out. Amen. <laughs> Go back to the old Tim Revival days. Come on. We'll have to hit some funeral homes and get some fans, I guess. But... It's time we let the community know we love them. This is not the day and the age to shove religion down people's throats. The message isn't changing, but the method has to. The method has to. And we got to get out of there. Let me just tell you something. The Lord has said to me in the last few, few weeks, the method is not social media. These churches that are trying to be churches online, it's not the way to go. We got churches that are being churches online and the congregation won't come out anymore because they can sit at home with their lazy boy and watch the church service. Yeah. Yeah. The Lord has said to me, that is not the way for you to go. Amen. You need people face to face. Can I show you what makes a difference? This makes a difference. Amen. This. Oh, yeah. come on. When Tammy has gone through all that Tammy can go through in a week, when Tammy has been through struggles with her family and the family won't listen to her and she's having a hard time hanging on and even on to her faith because everybody in the world seems to be coming against her and she feels like if one more pulls person pulls one like God, if one more pull person pulls one more string, I'm going to fall apart. Come on. Then Tammy don't need to go to church online. Tammy Amen. needs to be here. Amen. Amen. Tammy Amen. needs a hand. Amen. Tammy needs a hug. I'm not just singling her out, but I'm just using her as an example right now. That's what people need. That's what people need. They don't, and they don't need to come to church and be isolated in their seat and no one willing to sit next to them. Amen. 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 Come on, yeah. This is some tough stuff this morning, ain't it? Come on. This is some tough stuff, amen. But this is the love of Jesus at work. We have abandoned our first love. Amen. And Jesus, I, I, I just. In my heart, I wish I could explain to you what I feel, but I feel like the Lord of glory is sitting up there going, why are my people loving my people? Amen. Yes. Come on. Why are my people judging my people? Yes. Why are my people condemning my own people? Amen. Why do they talk about them? Why are they, they're, they're worried about so many things that are unnecessary, and they've yes. lost love in their hearts. Yeah. 
And come on, ladies and gentlemen, the Bible tells us that at the end of time, men's hearts will wax cold. Right. We know that this is coming. Why are we acting this way? We are just allowing the enemy to use us when we are not operating in love. Amen. You say, you've gone far off course. No, I'm not. I'm right on course. Because it's love that will cause you to be dedicated. And it's love that will make you be disciplined. And it's love that will keep you diligent. Amen. It's the love of Jesus. And the fellowship of the saints. Yes. Yeah. You cannot imagine how much I need all of you. Amen. You cannot. I sent a few texts out yesterday to a few different people. Just because I wanted them to know you are important to this house. Come on. You are important to this church. Right. We can't make it without you. Yeah. I know I've said I'd like to find a bigger church and all this kind of stuff, but let me tell you something. My heart is not about finding a bigger place of worship. My heart is about finding more people who want God. Amen. Yes. I don't want a bigger church so that I can say I got a bigger church. Come on. Amen. I've been careless about that. If God leaves me here for the rest of my ministry, that's fine. That's totally fine. I'm fine with that. I would just like to have a bigger place. I'd like to need a bigger place. Yes. Come on. Because God is sending us people who need to be loved. And we're loving them. Yes. Everybody stand.